Welcome back to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're coming to you from our home studios. We want to make sure, obviously, everyone is safe and healthy. So we're honored to be joined by someone who's in his home studio right now. It's a good friend of ours doing a lot of good with him, his team, uh, Agape Child and Family Services. He's the CEO and president. David Jordan, how are you doing? I am well. Thank you, Jeremy. So good to be with you, my friend. So Agape, um, love everything you all do. We've known you for a long time. We've served with you. Uh, you do so much good stepping into apartments and fragile areas of our community and mm. really pouring in love and this very robust support network. Mm. Give listeners, though, let's start with some context. So describe Agape Child and Family Services. Let's start there. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Agape is, and we were talking about a moment ago, we're 50 years old as of just uh, a couple of weeks ago in the month of April. Uh, thankful for that. This is my 25th year as the CEO, hard to believe, uh, but it's been a blessing and good. Uh, as, as you know, our first 25 years was given, Jeremy, to foster care and adoption exclusively until serving children and families in the child welfare system. Uh, for the last 20 plus years, We've really uh, asked the question, what does it look like to go upstream, if you will? And so serving in the same mission, really the same families, but saying rather than waiting for them to come into system, and yes, we still do some foster care and adoption, but we've really flipped that and we've gone into the communities where the kids and families live. And so specifically, we're in Frazier, Whitehaven, and Hickory Hill. You put those communities together, about half of all the kids that come into foster care, for example, live in those communities prior to coming into care. And so that was one of the reasons uh, we've gone into apartments, surrounding area, and, and we are holistically now serving families with a real poverty reduction focus. Describe on your end where it starts, because one of the things that I really appreciate and love about you all is you don't come in saying we know all the answers and we're here to mm -hmm. give them to you. You actually start with conversations and questions mm -hmm. and say, no, you know best. We're mm -hmm. here to basically fill in those gaps and in an area where you don't have the resources, but you know what you need. We're here to go find mm -hmm. those and bring those resources. So I love your approach. Describe your approach. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, so we, um, I guess back in 2008, Jeremy said, uh, my goodness, we need to stop assuming as, as too many of our nonprofits and I've been guilty of this and faith-based groups and other cor corporations, others just assume what families need. We said, Let, let's believe it or not, families know what they need. They know where they're at. They know what life is like. They can tell us what's going on. They can tell us their strengths and say, here's the thing standing in the way of my or our being successful. And so that's exactly what we've done. So since 2008, 2009, when we began what's called a place-based strategy, go to the place that people live, Frazier, Whitehaven, Hickory Hill, walk alongside, and first thing you do is what's working well and what's standing in the way of you being successful. And so what our families have said, here are the things that are standing in the way of our being successful. And Jeremy, they've talked about this for now 10, 11, 12 years to us. Number one is almost always safety that I don't feel safe uh, in my community, in my apartment. Uh, there may be domestic violence going on. There may be people walking into the apartments most often, into our communities. And so we need help around safety. They've also said we need help with education. I know uh, City Current and you've been a part of coming in an after school tutoring. We need help with education for our kids. And so we're in all 16 schools, K to 12, that our kids attend from the three, three communities, Fraser, Whitehaven, Hickory Hill, that we work in. We've also, our families say, you know, I need a job or more so, I need more of a job. Almost 50% of our families and our parents work. They're just underemployed. They're not making $15 an hour or more. And so, uh, so we, we've come alongside and working in that kind of way. So that now 38% of our adults are now making $15 an hour or more do very hard work on their part and are walking with them. We also, our family say, um, our family, our kind of our home, uh, our housing can be unstable. Uh, may need help with our families. And then in the center of this is a sense of hope and hopefulness. Do I have a sense of hope for today and for tomorrow? And so my board back in 2008 said, we will no longer ask for money. We won't go on a radio show. We're not going to do anything and talk about our families other than to say, Here's what they say are the things and the areas that are barriers 
And now Agape brings alongside just a range of evidence-based practices to be able to holistically serve. You holistically serve the whole family. So you take a multi-generational approach, which is important. And it's extremely collaborative too. So working with many, many other partner agencies, share on both ends why that's so important. Yeah, yeah. And so the, the, the multifamily, uh, also called two generations, so serving both parent, both child, so it's the, a whole family focus. I, I've been in this field for 35 plus years as, as a social worker, and my experience and research and, and evidence bear out, uh, yeah, I could serve the child and I could be a mentor going to their school, and that's very good, nothing wrong with that. But also mom, dad, auntie, uncle may have uh, needs around employment. There may be housing kind of needs. There may be a younger child in that home. There's early childhood. There's probably, there could be transportation needs. And so if you're not dealing and addressing the whole family, while these singular kind of efforts are very important, uh, you, you, you probably will not have as much success. The family surely won't without that. And so this collaborative piece is very important. So we have a hundred or more collaborators. And so organizations that do mentoring, organizations that are involved in child care, organizations that are focused on transportation, on housing. And so Agape is kind of the quarterback, if you will, walking alongside our families. And our staff actually are called connectors. We connect relationally and we connect by wrapping services around. And so we're holistically focusing on the family and all the matters going on in the family and then having collaborative partners work with us in alignment with what most meets the family's needs. Carry that forward on your end in terms of um, success, what you look at for success, the metrics, how do you grade success? Because obviously you're, you're tackling a lot all at once. And so then that becomes, okay, well, how do we measure what's moving and what's not? So what do you look at in terms of grading success? Yeah, that's a great question. we we have about 80 different measurements that, that we look at holistically. So for the whole family, if there's a child that's birth to five years of age, we have an early childhood focus. And so there's focus around a social emotional development. Is that child ready for kindergarten? And so the whole kindergarten readiness, it's a huge need in our community. And so that's one of the factors. Our kids in school, K to 12, we're working with about 1,200 of our youth in the schools, these 16 schools. Uh, are you in school? And we measure that. Uh, so attendance, uh, how are you doing in, around behavior uh, in school? And what about parent engagement in your parent or parents being involved? Obviously school's out right now by virtue of the time we're in, but that's, I've got over 30 staff embedded in the schools focused and we measure on that. On the workplace side, on, on the job side, I mentioned a moment ago, um, not only do you have a job, but do you have a job that's paying $15 an hour or more You literally cannot get out of poverty unless you're making at least $15 an hour or more. And so that's one of our markers. And so our goal has been, can we have 20% of our adults even get to that place? Again, in our our last quarter report, which came out uh, just a couple of weeks ago, 38% of our adults were at $15 an hour or more. Now, the times that we're in with COVID-19, that is backing us up. But that's, that's where our families were at at that point. Uh, And then this sense of hope and hopefulness. Is there a sense of hope um, that that you have for today and for tomorrow? And so we measure that. And so one of our our, kind of our major metric that we look at, Jeremy, is around poverty. And so all that poverty is and implies, which includes economic, it's not just, but it it clearly is economic. Um, And so can we move the needle by one percentage point a year for the next 10 years of families moving beyond poverty. Um, and so data shows only three to five percent of families living in poverty ever escape poverty in their lifetime to prosperity. Only three to five percent. And so we're saying, can we move the needle by one percentage point in a year? Well, in the last three years, uh, year one, we saw that needle move by nearly three percent. Two years ago, uh, second year, we saw it move by nearly four percent. This past year, as of the end of February, we saw it move by 6.35% wow. and actually 9% in the last quarter. And so we, we have seen it progressively improve. And so we're encouraged by that for our families. Doesn't mean that, that life has ended in terms of the work to be done, but, but we, when families are giving opportunity, giving resources, as you mentioned before, a platform, that our, our families can succeed 
but there are a lot of systemic matters to be addressed to be able to do that. I think that's the part where in many cases people want a quick fix. They want a silver bullet. And right. the fact is there's not one. And to your point, right. when you're dealing right. with generational poverty, systemic issues, it takes mm-hmm. a lot and it takes a very long-term really hand in hand approach. And yeah. in many cases that's one-on-one let's work together yes. with both parent and child and let's come alongside and let's do this over the long haul and let's get over one barrier at a time. And yeah. that's how you create that real change. But I think it does provide the hope, as you said, to mm-hmm. realize that those percentages are moving and that people are mm-hmm. seeing real mm-hmm. impact within their family and their ability to provide. And then obviously the hope that brings. Yes. You mentioned COVID-19 and obviously kind of the setback on that side. Yeah. What are you seeing right now with, because obviously we're, we're right in the thick of it for coronavirus yeah. and COVID-19 and the impact it's having for all of us. But for mm-hmm. you, obviously, in the families you serve, you're seeing it firsthand. Mm-hmm. What are you seeing and how is it affecting the families you serve? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, uh, while Agape offices are closed, uh, our agency is fully open. And so we've got 120 staff. And so our staff, our connectors are fully engaged with our families. And the question you just asked saying, how are you doing? What is it you need? And how can we most help? Well, um, what we know is 412 of our families have food insecurities, meaning they do not have enough food. And so we're raising dollars around that. Um, and, and so we've been having food delivered uh, so from the, the food dis- distribution site directly to the door of our families. So we're also honoring social distancing, not only for our staff, but for our families, wanting to be honorable to them. Um, we also, I mean, our kids aren't in school, as we know, and all, you know, and understandably. Well, that is now creating even more of a divide educationally for our kids. And so we are actively working on um, getting devices, computer devices, in all the homes of our families and creating a telecommunication, telehealth modeling so that uh, our staff will be able to communicate more with our families, just like you and I are doing this and having conversations. They'll have a device for their kids to educationally to be able to connect, also from a job perspective and workforce development. And so we think uh, as bad as COVID-19 is, this is giving us an opportunity to go even deeper with our families with some tools that maybe they've not had before So we're trying to get 500 devices out to our families with connectivity, with training, and be able to use it in this kind of way. Because uh, now over 200 of our families have lost income. And so when we quantify all this, we're we're raising over $400,000 just for some of these immediate needs for our families right now. What would your encouragement be to listeners um, in terms of stepping in and, and supporting and what that means for now, but really for us to get through this and get back yeah. on the trajectory that you were making before? So share why you think like yeah. this really is an important time to pour in and not pull yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. And that's another, it's a great question because um, most of us are thinking about how to I get to the grocery store? Is there going to be enough? How do I manage this? Uh, and, and so I've encouraged people in our own level of pain in this, because it's not been easy for anybody, um, be able to use your pain to connect with others' pain and where they're at. Uh, so for our families, uh, yes, there are immediate needs. And so if I want to give financially, there are a lot of places you can do that. Agape clearly is one. I can guarantee you the money is going directly to the families around food and immediate needs. We're very proactively saying, okay, to your point, once we're kind of on the other side of this current crisis in the COVID-19, what does that mean? Well, unemployment has flipped on its head now. So our families and families living in poverty and in in under-resourced communities, they're going to be even further behind. They're going to be further back in that line of trying to get to a job that would pay $15 an hour or more. And so it's going to be even harder And so for employers out there, we we are aggressively looking for partnerships and providing apprenticeships and even having dollars that would go into those apprenticeships so people are prepared for a job so that you have the workforce that you'd say, okay, I've seen them work. We've got dollars that have come to the table to be able to pay for them an apprenticeship. And yeah, I would make, I would consider paying them and hiring them at $15 an hour or more. And so we're very aggressively looking for those kind of pathways and those relationships to do that. How can we, uh, I know obviously volunteerism is a little bit different right now, Mm -hmm. but um, share maybe a few ways we can volunteer or help right now. And then obviously once everything's normalized, 
what mm-hmm. a couple of typical pathways are for volunteerism with Agape. Yeah, and, and so uh, I've, I've encouraged you know board and others uh, who've been doing it just volunteering by sharing the news, getting the word out, letting people know, and saying yes, this is a way. The, the primary way is can you give money because we're wanting to honor social distancing. I've had people say, hey, I could bring families food. I could do those kind of things. And I appreciate that. But we're really trying to honor our families well, as, as we all would understand, in terms of how we meet the immediate needs. Uh, I've actually, we, we do have volunteers. And so we actually are trying out for those volunteers are involved to be able to use Zoom and, and these kind of tools to be able to stay connected with our kids. And so, so we're already doing some of that with existing volunteers with kids and families are reporting is it's making a huge difference, you know, just having these face-to-face conversations and, and these interactions. And so that's a place that we'll want to go deeper in this kind of telecommunication, kind of tel- telehealth modeling that we plan to roll out as well. Last question is the easy one is just where do we go to reach out, to get in touch, to learn more, but to uh, start raising our hand to be a part of what you're doing with Agape Child and Family Services. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Our, our, our office number is 901-323-3600. Our website is agape, A-G-A-P-E, agape means love.org. And you can find anything and everything there. You can go on Facebook, agape means love. You can go on Twitter uh, the same way. Uh, so you can find us in, in, in almost any social medium out there, but 901-323-3600 or our website, agapemeanslove.org. David Jordan, President and CEO of Agape Child and Family Services. Greatly appreciate all you and your, your team do and uh, all the families you serve. You do so much. So thank you very much and for coming on the show. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you.